this is Megan from You Go To Be Kidding. Oh, the farther along we get in summer, the hotter it gets, the harder it gets to make these videos without looking like a hot mess. But um, today we are out here in the garden. I have actually been kind of keeping up this year. I was just sick for a couple of days, but I've been out here. I've been trying to take um, just some clips at the tomatoes every time I go by, trying to pull some weeds. Um, but if you can see behind me, you can see some organized section. There's some potatoes and some tomatoes. And then if I pan this way, this is the center section that I just let grow into a giant mess. But it's been really interesting. It's been a really fun experiment. Um, I have all the tomatoes that I started in the back row and some peppers. So I didn't really have any set plans for that area. So I just want to kind of show you what I have growing. Um, it is just about July. Uh, we desperately need some rain here in Tennessee but I have a bunch of stuff going uh, and I think it's been interesting to see what has worked really well, what needs some help um, and what I still hope to plant. Uh, I think I still have time, but I also just don't know. So sometimes I just try things and see what happens. So let me just show you around and let's take a look. So coming into my garden space, we have our chickens. We've actually been letting them out. This electric fence is not actually on, uh, but um, they have a little tiny alleyway here that they can get back in to the coop at night. The goats are up here. As you can see, they like to steal grain from the chickens. Hello, Cedar. Yes, she's being naughty. Um, only her and Elrond can reach in there. Oh, goodness, goats. Um, but so the chickens are helping take care of some of this grass that was growing up real bad. And obviously we've got a section here. They don't take care of the tall stuff. So we need to pull the mower in here, which is fine. And here's the garden. So this portion here actually looks fairly organized. They, we have a volunteer butternut squash, which I am totally saving. I have my rows of onions, which seem to be doing okay. A few of them. I have several rows of potatoes, which I imagine I could probably get very close to harvesting. I did not mound them nearly as much as I probably should have, but they're there. Um, and then my official row of tomatoes. I've got a marigold on the end, several different varieties. Some are doing better than others. Let me show you this. Can you see where the variety changes? So the short ones here are champagne bubble tomatoes. And then the big tall ones here are actually cherry tomato volunteers that from last year that I just moved over here. I have some tomatillos. It's really hard to see this close up. Tomatillos. And then it goes down the line. So my tomatoes continue down here. Um, and then I have a row of peppers. So I have some Anaheims and some bell peppers. And then we have this part. So in here are some tea posts and this is where I had my bee, my sugar snap peas. And they did great and they were in there and I actually just collected some dried ones to save for seeds. And all the rest of this is all tomatoes that I let grow up on their own as volunteers. Um, so this is actually the harvest I've got uh, this evening. I've got some basil and some tomatoes and we've eaten several batches of tomatoes. It's so wonderful having fresh tomatoes again. So this is the front side here. I had originally planted uh, carrots all in here. Um, you can see this wood beam. It was kind of marking off my carrot rows and then hiding in here. Oop, there you can see a tea post. That's where the sugar snap peas were. And so I am letting a few of the carrots go to seed to see what happens if they will replant for fall. Carrots usually do better. Um, they grew really well for us this spring, but then they get bitter by the time they're ready. It's too hot. So I'm hoping that those will replant for fall. You can see a volunteer burnout squash that popped up in here. Um, we have one big squash hiding in the back and some little baby squashes coming along. And then the, the tomatoes. The tomatoes are just everywhere. Um, they've, uh, so I'm trying to use the pea structure to get the tomatoes. It's just a hot mess in here. But this is what I've let happen. But it's somewhat contained this year where last year the whole thing was a giant mess. So then right next to this uh, area that I let go wild, I have uh, sweet potatoes all on the ground. And then actually these are called mangle wurzels. Um, those ones right there, they are giant beets. Uh, Sean and Beth Dotry of, I can't think of the name of their farm. Uh, they have a really great book about the family homestead. And uh, they talk at the Homesteaders of America conference. And they are a really sweet couple. They recommend these mangle wurzels uh, even just as chicken feed to grow food for your animals. So we tried those. 
this year. We're gonna see what happens. There, a few of them are doing really well. Uh, the sweet potatoes, and then I just got my cucumbers in. That's I used my rake just so that way the kids wouldn't accidentally step on the spot there, and then they back into the peppers. So, oh, and I have one surprise along the edge. All along the edge are some watermelons, and I'm gonna let them grow up the hill towards the fence there. So that's the rest of my garden here. So this is from the back side, the sweet potatoes. You can see the mango wurzels up front, how tall they get. And then my cucumbers I just planted. So I've got to try to work out some sort of trellis. I think I'll just do a cattle panel. I am worried about it shading these bell peppers right behind them. But I think I'm just gonna to have to do what I can because this was the spot I had <laughs> since this spot. So you can see I let grow up behind it too. These are mostly tomatoes. I let them go because this is where all the ripe tomatoes have come from. These ones came first. None of the ones back here in my row, uh, well, a few, uh, have been ripe there. So I let these go. Once my back ones start ripening, I might pull some of these out to get some more space, but it's pretty shaded here, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. Again, I just try my best and do what I can and then see what happens from there. I've got my watermelons. They're gonna go up here, and then I have this giant elderberry uh, tree, shrub, bush. Um, I got this as a tiny, tiny little start from a friend and it's grown huge and it's probably in a terrible spot because what is so fascinating to me is you can see, I mean, I know the sun matters, but look at the difference between I planted sweet potatoes in like a grid. They went all the way, but you can see where the shade of this elderberry has uh, killed one sweet potato that was under there and then this severely stunted this one. And then the mango wurzels as well. Those ones are huge and awesome, but these ones here. Uh, so this is morning sun. This is directly east and the sun comes up and around. And then this gets full afternoon sun uh, for most of the day. But even with just that difference in the morning, it has made such a huge difference in the plants, which is fascinating. But also means I might need to find a better spot for my elder elder plant here so not sure where to put it I desperately need some new or I don't need new garden space but I'd love to add some more garden space uh, for different things I feel like I'm always in a contest of what shades what and I'm not sure how best to plant things all right guys that's the main garden section I do have a couple of other spots the herb garden uh, the blueberries and strawberries and so I'll show you a couple clips of those but thanks for watching we really appreciate it we hope to see you next time so this is the small planter I still have my lemon balm which I just keep cutting back and back and back because it keeps wanting to go to seed and get really stemmy I have some holy basil it didn't come up on its own but my friend Julie gave me some more so I'm all, all set there I'm gonna let it go to seed this season a little bit more than I did last season since I didn't come back and my, I've always called it yarrow, but I keep hearing people call it yarrow. So I'm not sure which it is. I was here and I see a little visitor. I'm sorry, buddy, but you are going to go be a chicken snack. Ugh, I don't like touching them. Ugh. Here you go, chickens. Whoop. Find it. Good job. The other day I found the largest tomato hornworm I've ever seen. It was as big as my finger. I'll show you a picture. Um, but I actually kind of hit it. That I had thrown a bunch of tomato clippings right here and uh, the chickens were out getting the, the good grass. So I threw him on the pile of tomato clippings and maybe just maybe he survived, but probably not because the chickens definitely went to town there. So this is our fig section. They're all doing fantastic. Look how tall that one is. And I actually just planted some lemon thyme. I had gotten some of this before and I killed it because apparently it does not actually need all that much water. And so I'd put it on the other bed, but figs don't like very much water either. So I am keeping it over here. And so far so good. I just transplanted it, but actually it looks happy even though it's so crazy hot out uh, and so dry. So I've watered it a few times, but not much. The figs are going crazy. My comfrey's hiding over here. And the calla lily I got four blooms off of, which was super awesome. But these figs, I'm excited. Look at them. Hopefully they'll actually stand. Look at how many this one has. Alrighty, this is the last section up front. As you can see, my trough is filling out a little bit. I've got my blueberry still, and if you can see, I have a passion fruit. I um, found it near my fence line up front and moved it. And I learned that it's actually a perennial. 
which means it comes back. So the plant I took last year and moved here was just small. It never grew very big because it was the end of the season. And then it died back and it came back up in that same spot. So I'm really, really excited about that. Hoping maybe I'll actually grab a couple more and put them along this fence line a little further down. But let me show you else what I, but let me show you what else I have in this bed up here. All right, here's my calendula. It's going gangbusters on these couple of plants. Um, I heard that if you cut them, if you keep cutting them, they'll keep coming back. Um, and that seems to be true. But this one I cut really early when the flower came up and then it's just now finally getting its second bud. This one I waited a little longer before I cut the first one off, which you can see here. And then these ones popped up. So cut them off, but wait a little bit. Then some cilantro. All right. My tomatoes are finally ready and the cilantro is done. Some violets I stuck in here, which um, are actually really good as an herb as well. Some rosemary, some bee balm, which my son actually found out in my front yard. I had some last year in the other trough and it had died off and didn't come back. So super excited to find that and actually just used it this week to help with congestion. So um, I just put some boiling water on some of the leaves and flowers and uh, then just kind of breathed in the steam. And that worked really, really well. Uh, it's a little sad right now because we just transplanted it, but I think it might be okay and I've got a patch in the front. So some sage and then my strawberries are going gangbusters. And I have a couple of flowers on each side and some zinnias hiding back behind, which hopefully will bloom. I did not realize I got this tall. So hopefully they don't run into the netting and run out of space. All right, that is the last thing. Actually, the uh, raspberries right in front of our propane tank. Those are going really well too. So far, so good. It's been so exciting to get blueberries. We've had over two, no, we've had over four cups of blueberries, probably even more than that. We've had several strawberries, even though we were late in the season. Did I see one hiding in there? Nope, not yet. There's some coming though. There's still some. So I have some ever bearing and some June bearing ones. Alrighty, well, it is just about dark. You can see the sky it looks amazing. We hope you have a great night. Oh, we are so thankful for this land. We're so thankful that God's given us a chance to be good stewards. We're always praying that we are good stewards of our land and our resources, and we pray that for you as well. Have a great night.